Golly, that's good. I cracked myself up. I still haven't found my first Blanton's. <laughs> that's different. I really like that. They're like together, like peas and carrots. That's funny. Sometimes accidents are good things. Peshods or pechods or pecha. <laughs> this is not what I expected. <laughs> Melissa's watching and Bill is watching. Thanks for coming on board. We're going to do something tonight that's going to be kind of fun. Uh, and then stick around because next month uh, we're going to be starting a new uh, series. And that, that's going to start next Thursday, which will be on Leap Day, the 200 or 366th day of the year. Extra one tacked on to the end of February, which is a pretty good spot. I wouldn't want to have a December twenty or December thirty second. I just I just don't don't think I would want that. So anyway, uh, so here we go. Today we're going to be doing Traveler. This is the new one from Sazerac Company, uh, rumored to be Buffalo Trace. We're going to get into it, tell you all about it. Uh, it's from Buffalo Trace Distillery, and despite the excitement when it came out. <clears throat> Now it's just kind of, hey Wade, how are you sir? Now it's just kind of sitting there in stores wondering what happened. <laughs> Matter of fact, when I got this one, uh, there was a large allocation of it. And uh, I didn't get the plastic all the way off. This is going to be messy. And, um, and it was sitting there in front of the counter, like boxes and boxes and boxes of it. And it had been released like the week before, and there was still a lot of it there. So evidently people aren't as excited about Traveler as they thought they were gonna be. Uh, when it first came out, people were online and they were going, oh, where's the Traveler? I need to find it. <laughs> and I just kind of sat back and waited, and sure enough, when I wanted it, there it was. It wasn't hard to find. So, and people are still going, oh, I still to find the Traveler. <laughs> it's right here. <laughs> it's in every store. It's sitting on the shelf. So let's get into it a little bit deeper. All right. Um, so, um, could this be Buffalo Trace at its worst? It's a blend and a celebrity brand that teams up Buffalo Trace and Chris Stapleton, who's a country singer that I don't know a lot about. I know he did um, Smooth as Tennessee Whiskey, I think, is one of his songs. He did a cover of it. It wasn't his song originally. Copier. <laughs> Copycat. Uh, Buffalo Trace blended different whiskeys over 50 times before settling on blend number 40. How are you, Josh? Joshua's watching, thank you for that. I do appreciate it. Uh, we don't know if it's all Buffalo Trace Distillery distillate. Could be from other distillers owned by Sazerac. Don't know the mash bill, don't have an age statement. Uh, kind of like me, no age statement. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, one of the bugaboos about this sip is that we don't know much about it. Uh, we don't know what distilleries it really comes from. Uh, how long parts of it were aged, what it means for Harlan Wheatley and Chris Stapleton to be co-founders of this thing, other than just lending their names to it and creating a buzz. Um, according to a press release, I'm learning that Stapleton doesn't have much of a palate. He kind of goes like this if he likes it and like this if he doesn't like it. Okay, all right. I, I like to be able to dig in a little and tell a little bit more. Uh, as far as his involvement physically, uh, he was at the distillery when they did the first bottling. Other than that, I don't think Chris Stapleton has really had much to do with it except for lending his name to it and making, maybe making some dollars off of it. But here's what I know about it, and, and evidently Chris Stapleton did help with this. Uh, the Traveler font is from an 1880s uh, Kentucky map that Stapleton found. If you look through the bottle to the back of it, you'll see a replica of an 1800s map. And that's kind of cool. It's, the map is centered on Stapleton's birthplace of Lexington, Kentucky, and shows Lee's Town, the founding site of Buffalo Trace, and there's a railroad that goes between them. And the railroad tracks extend out of the front traveler label as well. See, there's railroad tracks here. <laughs> okay, some thought was put into the bottling, okay. Uh, it is, it is something proof. <laughs> I want to say I heard it was 90. Well, I'll be darned if I can find it anywhere. Blend, oh, there's, it is 90, 45% alcohol by volume. So 90 proof, 
I'm not expecting great things off of this. It's dribbling on me. Clay, how are you? I'm glad you're with us. Thank you for watching. Checking out Traveler today. We don't know what's in the mash. We don't know what distilleries took part in it. We don't know how long it was aged. Um, we got to say it's at least four years, right? Uh, were they able to keep this, this partnership under wrap for that long? Or is it four years from stuff that was aged elsewhere and then blended and then pushed to the public fast? Don't know. Sometimes we just don't know things. So, and Tom is watching. Hey, Tom, glad you're with us. You guys could be anywhere else, but you're here with me on a Thursday night, and I appreciate it. We're going to get through this together. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. How many times? Oh, before I go any further, I got to tell you this. I was a little bit harsh last week on the Nelson brothers, and I shouldn't have been. But, I mean, when you are putting it up against the Bell Mead cask strength that they don't really make anymore, there is a Bell Mead, but this cask strength reserve will never be found again. They do have a, a Bell Mead reserve, but it's 108 proof. It's not cask strength. It's just a different monster altogether, and this was fantastic. And putting it back to back with a Nelson Brothers reserve was not fair. You see how not fair it is. It was a bottle kill <laughs> this week. Uh, last night, as a matter of fact, I finished this up, and um, this, by itself, this is pretty good. It's 108, 107.8 uh, proof, and the flavors on this are really quite nice. And so, you know, here I am beating up on Nelson Brothers, and, and here everybody's telling me, oh, it's not as good as Bell Mead. They're right, it's not as good as Bell Mead. But you know what? It's a really fine whiskey. This is a very, very tasty whiskey. So if you're looking for something that you haven't tried before, I can tell you, I will recommend, and I was really surprised by, since it's not going back to back with the Bell Mead anymore, I was really surprised by the Nelson Brothers Reserve bourbon. This is, uh, this is fantastic. It's really, really good. You should buy it and try it for yourself. I was happy with it. I was as happy with that as I was with the Joseph Magnus, the triple uh, cask blend. That surprised me as well. So, okay, now. Uh, Aaron's watching. Hey, Aaron. So, okay, let's get into this now that we're now that we're paying attention to Traveler. I just had to put out that mea culpa. Nelson Brothers deserved better than what they got last week, and I'm going to give this my best this week because you know I I'm, I really have no expectations whatsoever. The internet's talking about it, both good and bad. Let's push all the hyperbole behind us and taste this bad boy. The nose is really nice. It's got a nice caramel to it, some nice cinnamons to it, um, hints of vanilla, not a lot. Um, the oak is nice. I'm getting I'm getting a really nice balance of oak there. Again, they tried fifty over fifty blends, and decided on blend number forty. We don't know what that is, but. They did put in their due diligence. I mean, when you do when you do a barrel pick, you don't get that many choices. <laughs> you, you get what they give you. <laughs> you might have five or six, maybe seven barrels to choose from, maybe ten tops. So, I mean, kudos to them for putting in the time and the energy. All right, Chris is watching. Hey, Chris, how are you? Slight tinge of honey on the nose as well. You got to look for it. The oak and the and the and the caramel are what I'm getting most off the nose. All right, let's uh, let's try this out here. See how it's holding onto the glass. It's uh, I just washed this glass and it looks filthy. Oh well, sorry for my lack of hygiene. <laughs> All right, it's got a really nice bloom. For a 90 proof pour, it's got a very nice bloom. Stretch right on the tip of your tongue, spreads out nicely, got up to the sides of my cheeks and up to the roof of my mouth. It was actually a, a very, very nice bloom. 
Other than that, the viscosity is low. It's got a very thin mouthfeel. Not as thin as other, th like, if you, were, if you ever tried the, the 90 proof Ezra Brooks, or the Benchmark 8, or some of those really cheap pours like that, that's a thin mouthfeel. This isn't that bad. Uh, it's thinner than I would like. I think for this one, I would, I think that a, a great remedy for this would be for Buffalo Trace to not filter this. If it didn't go through chill filtering or didn't go through carbon filtering or whatever it's going to go through, I think it would be um, much better viscosity in the mouthfeel. Um, I worked with somebody for a while who hated it when I called silky mouthfeel. Stop it. <laughs> silky mouthfeel. <laughs> but it's thin. Uh, again, great bloom. A little thin. Let's go back to it. Doing good, uh, bought a bottle, but haven't cracked it open yet. All right, well, hopefully my review will spawn you to open it or give you some expectations about when you do open it. Um, we're going to run through the whole gamut tonight. We're going to put it on water, we put it on ice as well. not bad. Um, it, that thin mouthfeel is also translating somewhat into a thin flavor. It just doesn't have a lot happening. Um, it doesn't taste bad. Uh, it, it doesn't taste bad at all. Um, there just isn't enough flavor of it. You know, I, it just, it just needs to, ne there just needs to be a little more to it. And again, I think if they didn't filter it, that might help. Perhaps a little higher proof might help. Um, but for me, I think the filtering would, would definitely help it. Uh, Quinn's watching. Ann is watching. Hey, Ann, how are you? We're, we're, Ann, we're cutting through the rumors here. We're going to cut through it and tell you what we think of, <laughs> of Buffalo Trace Traveler while I spit it all over myself. <laughs> and your table. <laughs> I, I don't want to, I don't want to even ask how many bourbons this is wiped up. <laughs> but that's all it's wiped up. Bourbon. It's my bourbon rag. That could be a, that could be like a vaudeville song. The bourbon rag. We'll get Henry Mancini out of the grave so he can do it. All right, let's hit it again. That's gonna annoy me. We're gonna pour it backwards. All right, so again, it reminds me of that 90 proof Ezra Brooks. The more I drank that 90 proof Ezra Brooks, the more I liked it. So maybe that'll be the case here after it's open for a while, right? This is a fresh crack. This is what we call the neck pour. So once it opens up, it might present itself as something a little bit better than it is tonight. It's just thin, thin on flavor, thin on mouthfeel. All right, so let's do the water. Because when I first started drinking the Ezra Brooks 90, which in recollection is probably the thinnest of all the 90 proofs I've ever drank, and it was under it was under 20 bucks. But the more I drank it and the more it stayed open, the more I liked it. So let's see what this does. I will tell you I'm expecting it to improve its viscosity. Because often when you take something thin like this and you put it on water, it improves the mouthfeel and opens up the flavor and sometimes can even reignite that proof. I've seen that, I've, I've been there, I've done that. Like, ooh, it got hotter with water, which is weird because you're proofing it down, but it gets hotter. Why? I would love an explanation on that when that happens. All right. John's watching. Hey, John. <laughs> How are you, sir? I'm glad you're with us tonight. You could be anywhere else, but you're here with me and I appreciate it. We're doing the Traveler, uh, of which we don't know the origin, the mash bill, the aging statement or anything. But we know that uh, neat, it's a little thin and uh, thin on flavor as well. So, but it's got a really nice bloom. And now we're going to put it on water and see if it improves any. Mm. 
mouthfeel improved greatly. Kind of expected that would happen. Um, and I'm happy that it did. There's actually more flavor now too. Not a lot more. But what I'm getting is a sweet caramel and a little bit of honey. Uh, that oak is still present, but it's not as much as I got on the nose. Um, and the oak, before I put water in it, it just it wasn't there. Um, not to me. Your experience may be a little bit different, but to me, it just wasn't there. Um, there's, there's some nice flavors. It's, it's still not robust enough. Now, again, I'm coming off of Nelson Brothers and Bell Mead, and, and uh, the week before that, I did E.H. Taylor and put that back-to-back -back with the Smoke Wagon Small Batch, which is just a complete whiskey hug, a full-body whiskey-loving hug. <laughs> Larry's watching. Hey, Larry, I'm glad you're with us. We're talking about being hugged. <laughs> So this is the traveler, <clears throat> excuse me, the traveler on a, on a little bit of water. Definitely has more flavor. Uh, it didn't bring up the proof any. Matter of fact, it did knock it down a slight bit. And it didn't need that. But it did bring up the viscosity in the mouthfeel, which is nice. And it did bring up a little bit of flavors. It just still isn't quite as robust as I would like it to be. If you are a fan of um, Tin Cup, Basil Hayden, uh, the Four Roses 80 proof, because that's a little spicier than some other 80 proofs. Um, if you're a fan of uh, the, the uh, Four Roses small batch, I'll even throw that one in there. If you're a fan of those, then you will like the Traveler. It's not super expensive. I don't think I wrote down what the price was, but it was under $40, if I remember right, or right at $40. It wasn't a lot. It's not an expensive bottle. But I think the thing that I would probably match it up closest with, and it's not quite 100% fair to do this, would be the Tin Cup. Tin Cup is an 80 proof. It's a blended whiskey. It's blended with Stranahan's single malt. Um, but it's got uh, it, what they wanted with, with the tin cup is something very, very smooth. Smooth means 80 proof. I mean, if, if you're a fan of Irish whiskey, you know that, that that's 80 proof a lot of times. There are some that are more than that, but a lot of Irish whiskeys are 80 proof and they are considered very smooth because of that. And they have the mash bill that supports that. Well, the single malts that go into Irish whiskey would be similar to the single malt that's in Stranahan's that goes into tin cup. <laughs> So, but if you like Tin Cup, I think you'd really like Traveler. It's got more of a bite, kind of like a Basil Hayden does. Uh, but Basil Hayden's an 80 proof, an overpriced 80 proof. I, I had to get some slam into Basil Hayden. I had to do it. I'm sorry. But this has got a nice burn to it. And this has less flavor than Basil Hayden. About the same as Tin Cup. If you've had those, then you know what I'm talking about. It's not a disappointing pour but it is what it is. So would I buy another bottle of this? Yeah, sure, sure I would for the price, but I would make sure that I opened it up and left it open for a while before I drank out of it or I put water on it. Probably the former rather than the latter because I did notice a drop in proof. Mm. All right. Boop. Can it stand up to a cocktail? I don't know. Let's find out. Turn it around again until I get that plastic off of there. That's going to drive me nuts. One review said it would hold up to a cocktail. Another one said it would not. And I don't read generally what other people think of the whiskeys because I want to be able to think of it for myself. But when it came to the ice sphere and whether or not it holds up, that I was curious about. It's a gorgeous ice sphere. <laughs> it's a used gorgeous ice sphere. <laughs> yep, I'm the ice sphere pimp. Using this ice sphere over and over and over again. <laughs> All right. It's small enough I don't have to finger stir it, Paul. I'm sorry, Paul, if you're watching, Paul. Sorry, no finger stirring for you. But that should be enough to cool it down. All right, here we go. Yep, 
if you like a light bourbon flavor in your mixed drinks, from Old Fashions to Manhattans, throughout the line, this does hold up on a nice sphere. Um, it doesn't add anything. It doesn't pull anything away. Uh, the proof is still gone. I mean, you are going to mute the flavors when you put it on ice, but it's not bad. Um, I've had other ones that just fell apart completely. This one does not fall apart completely. So, you know, I'm not going to put this on my top five list for the year, and I'm not going to put it on my top ten list for the year. But uh, does it offend me? No. No. Another one of those cases, it is what it is. Um, I would not put this in the echelon of Buffalo Trace bourbons because it's a blend that we don't know the origins from. It could be anywhere in the Sazerac family that this thing came from. We have no idea. They won't tell us. They're being very secretive. Flavor stays. I, I, I was feeding somebody a Manhattan, and they liked Manhattans, and I said, I want to give you a rye Manhattan. They said, that's fine. I like rye. I said, great. I use the old Overholt 114. My pour. That's my pour. You know that. That's my deal. That's... <laughs> That's, that's my go-go juice. I love that stuff. Anyway, I used that, and he took one sip of that Manhattan and went... <laughs> so, if, if he's a tame drinker, uh, then this may be a little bit more to his liking. He'll use the Traveler and his Manhattans, and he'll be just fine. Because it does maintain its flavor. It's not overly flavorful to begin with, but there's still flavor on ice, so that's a nice thing. All right. Next week, we are starting a new series... I'm going to cork this and let it sit a week and see what happens to it. We're going to start a new series. Uh, Bottled and Bond Day is coming up very quickly. Uh, that is the day that they pass the Bottled and Bond Act. So we're going to do a series throughout March, starting on February 29th, that are the Bottled and Bond. We haven't done a Bottled and Bond series. We've done some bottled and bonds along the way, but never a series of different ones and explain the differences between them. They do have some similarities most of the time. However, some bottled and bond, like one of the criteria, there it is, uh, one of the criteria is that it has to be um, uh, uh, barreled for at least four years. Some go longer than that. But since we're talking about the old Overholt, that's what we're going to start with next, next week. The old, I have never had this yet. I've had the regular old Overholt and I've had the 114. I've not had the 100 proof bottled and bond. So this is going to kick off our bottled and bond series coming up next week on Leap Day, the 29th of February, right here on Beautiful Bourbon. You can check us out here and thank you for doing so. You could be anywhere else, but you're here and I, I thank you. It means a lot to me. Thank you for being here. Um, uh, we have reached over 250 subscribers on YouTube. We're at 256 at last look, which is really kind of exciting. I never expected to get six, <laughs> let alone 256. That's nice. Um, so we're, we're doing things there and we're getting regular feedback, which has been fun. Um, the Chinese are trying very, very hard to hack beautifulbourbon.com. I don't know why. The last time I updated BeautifulBourbon.com, I hadn't even hit number 100 yet, I don't think. And this is number 199. So next week, for the beginning of Bottled and Bond, that's episode 200. Yeah, 200. We hit 200. <laughs> so anyway, uh, so I don't know why they're so interested in my site and what they think that they're going to do with it. I don't know. Learn something about whiskey, maybe? I don't know. They've got Japanese whiskey. I was talking about Chinese. I don't know if they have Chinese whiskey. I know they have Japanese whiskey. I don't, I don't even know if they have whiskey in China. They'd have to, wouldn't they? I don't know. Okay, well, anyway, so we're going to start the Bottle and Bond series next week. I do appreciate you being here with me. I have so much fun doing this, and, and knowing that you're here with me is just all the more fun, uh, and I appreciate it. So we will see you next week as we kick off the Bottle and Bond series. Uh, Traveler, it's okay. It's all right. We will talk to you next Thursday. Have fun.